What's going on? I'm Larry Hoover Jr. and I'm rocking with Street Certified News. What's your boy L Hitter, Mr. All Yeah, y'all already know what it is, man. I'm rocking with Street Certified News. We got behind the scenes, man. We're gonna tie this bitch up. Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Mix El Guapo, man. Street Certified News. We back with another one. First, I wanna shout out uh everybody, man, who been liking, subscribing. You know what I'm saying? Really rocking with the channel, man. We really appreciate that. Make sure you smash that like button. You know what I'm saying? Let's get this joint to 500 likes, man. Then I'm going to run it right back. So this week's story, man, um, it's, it's about the boy 1090J. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he been in the news a lot. Um, he's gained popularity from multiple interviews as well as his YouTube channel in the sentence. I believe at this point he has like almost a million, you know what I'm saying, subs. So he's, you know, doing it really, you know, really big. Um, a lot of this stuff in, in today's story, man, is like stuff that I kind of already have been seeing. But, you know, I wanted to be partial, you know what I'm saying, or impartial. I wanted to be impartial. And I didn't really want to seem like I was jumping on Buddy, you know, due to his new success. You know, we in very kind of similar lanes. So I just didn't want to come off as that guy. But recently, I was looking up paperwork on, you know, on everyone. And it just kind of gave me that feeling of like, man, let's, let's, all right, let's, let's see what's really up with dude. You know what I'm saying? So this week's story, man, we're going to break down the boy 1090J and the three times he snitched on his ops. 1090J, aka Jacob D. Cherry was born August 29th, 1994 in Malden, Massachusetts. Although he would eventually move back to the Boston area as an adult, his family moved to Tampa, Florida when he was just a kid, and he was mostly raised in Florida. It would also be in Florida where 1090 Jake's criminal career would begin. In 2012, an 18-year-old Jacob Cherry was arrested for burglary and for being armed with a weapon and hit with 19 felonies. He would eventually plead guilty to four and be sentenced to three years in state prison on October 1st, 2012. When 1090J first interviewed with ThisIs50.com, he stated that he went to jail for carrying a concealed firearm. So it would seem that he was able to get the burglary charge dropped and only copped out to the gun. Once sentenced, Cherry will be sent to Lancaster Correctional Institution in Central Florida. So, the first kind of funny part I noticed about uh, researching um, 1090J, you know what I'm saying, Jacob Cherry, was that, you know, when you look into his jail records, you know, bro said he was locked up for three years, you know what I'm saying, he did three years in, in Florida State Prison. Um, but then when you read his interview with This Is 50, he also kind of talks about being like in a youth facility first, and then like some wild shit happening and then like getting sent to the real jail so it's funny that when you look into like when you look online at his jail records they actually leave out all of the stuff that happened at the first place he went which was lancaster um it looks it it, it would seem like an adult prison but it's mainly for like juvenile offenders 17 18 like first time that's like the area where most of them go for their first crime and they you know you can't find any information about bro at that facility um they they only tell you about the facility that he ended up being released from in 2015 so you know i just thought i just thought that was you know what i'm saying a little a little funny right there you know what i mean it's always certain shit that you you see get left out and I always be paying attention to like, what aren't they talking about? You know what I'm saying? Cause that's usually the shit that they don't want people to know about. While incarcerated in Lancaster, there were rumors for the first time of Cherry snitching on inmates in his unit. Some believe 1090J snitched on a man after sustaining serious injuries in a jail gang fight. Seemingly to cooperate this story, a man who goes by the name Cherry Smasher on Instagram now has a page dedicated to outing Jake as a snitch. This man claims Cherry was transferred to Appalachia from Lancaster after giving info on him and other inmates to investigators. Now to remain transparent, 
This man's claims have yet to be substantiated with paperwork. However, in 1090 Jake's interview from This Is 50, he recounts serving time first in a youth prison, which Lancaster is. He also details being slash stabbed and having his head split with a brick, all within the first year during his time at Lancaster. In that same interview, he also admits he was transferred to a different prison after a massive gang bust for which he was associated with a blood set while in the Lancaster Youth Facility. Like, I ain't saying, dude, like, I, I saw the Instagram. We gonna show y'all the Instagram page, dude. It's shit's hilarious, man, dude. Just basically, like, he clowned at 1090, but in the in the bio, he basically kind of say his whole story. Um, we don't reached out to dude, you know what I'm saying? He ain't hit us back and nothing like that, but, um... Like, it's funny because in the interview back in 2021, like when Jake first started getting notoriety, uh, he did an interview with thisis50.com. Um, in that interview, he actually says all that shit happened. He was like, he got sent to a youth facility first, which Lancaster is a youth facility. And then he said it was like a big gang war and fights and niggas was getting stabbed. Nigga even said he like slashed somebody's throat and some other shit. He's basically, he's cooperated kind of dude's story in an interview. Chances are, man, come on, a dude gets slashed up, beat up in a gang war, he gonna be in the hospital and probably tell the people, at least on one motherfucker who, who he know has something to do with that shit. Like, come on, it's a fucking white boy in jail. Like, let's, let's be real. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't trying to hate on the man. It ain't no, like, racism or nothing, but it's like, if you ever been to jail, you know, like, when shit pop off and the motherfucking white boys get their head beat in, they gonna tell them somebody. Either way, yeah, man, he got beat pretty badly and he had to be transferred. He admits to all of that stuff. Um, to to kind of go with the story, he said he slashed somebody's throat. Um, he was never given additional time. I know he got like videos where he like showing all his disciplinary reports, like all the times he got in trouble, got in fights when he was in jail. Um, Sometimes that shit equal more time. Um, if it's serious enough, they literally will give you more time, whether it's assault, whether it's attempt murder, murder, they add that shit on and you would end up doing more time. He never did more time. He got out the same day that he knew he was going to get out the day he went in. So. In 2016, after moving back to Massachusetts, 1090 Jake was again arrested, this time for assault. After only receiving two years probation, 1090 Jake retired from a life of crime and in 2019 started his YouTube channel, End of Sentence where he discussed his time in prison. He seemed to like to talk about his time behind bars, so much so that the majority of his early videos discussed life in the Florida prison system. In January 2020, soon after the start of his YouTube channel, Jacob did an interview on a local news broadcast where he gave details on inmates acquiring illegal goods and how common it was in prison. Many in the hip hop community believe this interview alone was enough to label 1090 Jake a snitch. This would have now been the second time Jacob Cherry was called out for speaking with authorities on the inner workings of the Florida prison system. And while early critics were quick to post clips, Jake's viewers stood behind him and claimed he was only being a journalist. When I first saw that video, um, like, I ain't really think the streets would take Buddy serious to the point where like it would become like some shit that came up. You know what I'm saying? To be honest, like I really felt that, like I really felt that dude was like a YouTuber. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, he went to jail, and yeah, you know all this shit happened to him. But it's like he just gonna be a YouTuber. Like I ain't think the industry would take him serious. And then early on. When he first dropped his YouTube channel, he kind of portrayed himself as like a former gang member and like a former all of these things. And it was like basically he was like, hey man, I I, I had I saw something, I jumped into it, I went to jail for it, I saw what life was like, and now I never want to go back. And he kind of carried himself that way originally, like when his channel first started. Um so then when you later see him down the line, you know what I'm saying, kind of portraying more like a gangster image, um, it that's why all this shit is coming up, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, I saw the video. I ain't really think it was a problem at the time. Um, I mean, he a YouTuber. He talking about the same shit he talked about on his YouTube channel. He just telling the news. And it seemed weird. Most street niggas would not even ever be in that situation to be doing that type of shit. 
Um, so I think that's where the disconnect comes. Um, you know, are these guys YouTubers, entertainers? Are they just like portraying the street stuff? Are they really living that life? Because it be certain rules and shit that like they don't be living like that. Like that ain't the real way. You know what I'm saying? And it'd be kind of weird because you know, like I said, some people would take what we do and what he do and say, oh man, you know, y'all could be hating. You know what I'm saying? He doing better than y'all. And that's why I didn't drop this video, you know, six months ago, a year ago, because I don't, I ain't hate no dude. You know what I'm saying? Like I, 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 rock, I rock with what he's doing. Um, he just happens to be doing it. Like you know what I'm saying? And maybe he not the best guy to be that type of authority. But I mean, he's not doing. You know what I'm saying? What he's doing is not bad work. But I mean, it's just so happened that he wanted them guys too. And that's the weird part about it. Like, ugh, that's a little nasty. You know what I'm saying? On March 23rd, 2012. Seven months before, he would be convicted for having a weapon and a possible burglary. Police responded to shots fired at a residence on 8314 North Fremont Avenue in Tampa, Florida. At the time, it was the residence of a 17-year-old Jacob Cherry. Cherry had called the cops after two teens shot an airsoft pistol through his home's windows. Responding police were unable to apprehend the suspects at the time. But with the description 1090J gave, the two suspects were eventually found and arrested. The teens claimed they were playing a prank on someone that they knew and had no intention of doing harm. Statements of 17-year-old Jacob Cherry were refuted. In fact, 1090J told police officers he had never met the man he seen shoot through his home. All of this being verified through a number of documents filed by Tampa police regarding the 2012 incident. Jacob Cherry was the victim and only witness to this crime. Seven months later, he himself would be convicted of gun charges and sent to that youth prison in Lancaster. In the hip hop culture, we've always accepted people who wanted to be a part of it, regardless of where they were from. For those reasons, a guy like 1090 Jake was able to amass hundreds of thousands of fans who related to his jail stories and began to consider him somewhat of an authority on street politics. His business of outing rappers and taking payments to clear others has in recent years become very lucrative. 1090 Jake can now be regularly seen on social media going back and forth with rappers taking pictures with his entourage and flexing money and jewelry, seemingly living the life of the gangsters he once dreamed to be like. However, 1090 Jake himself is much like the men he now gets paid to expose. His popularity mixed with a shaky street resume raised suspicions of his character, and now after investigating his past more closely, it could be said that he himself has his name on paperwork helping multiple police investigations. Whether 1090J will respond to these allegations remains uncertain. However, we at Street Certified News stand by the story fully and its entirety. These were the three times 1090J snitched on his ops. Man, like I said, man, appreciate y'all for rocking with us, man. Um, smash that like button. Drop a comment, man. Let us know, man. You rock with 1090J. You know what I'm saying? Do you believe what, what, you know what I'm saying? What he's saying about all these rappers. You know what I'm saying? Or do you think it could be a little bit of guilty conscience? You know what I'm saying? Because he used to be one of them guys. So now he's trying to find everybody else. Um, man, it's your boy MX El Guapo, man. Street Certified News. The most reputable source for urban media, man. Appreciate y'all for rocking with us, man. Love y'all, man. We out.